Hi guys, it's Kayla here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review. And excuse my appearance, it is Sunday. I just took a shower and my hair is still a little wet and it looks weird. I don't have makeup on and it's just, it's okay, you know, because half the time this is what I look like. You know, as soon as I come home from work, I take off my makeup and I get in comfy clothes and this is what it's like. So yeah. And the lighting in my room is really weird right now in my office. It's like hazy. I don't know. So I apologize for that. Anyways, so I'm doing a book review, a book talk on Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. I loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I'm not surprised that I loved it. I saw the movie uh, shortly after it came out. I saw the movie shortly after it first came out and it was beautiful and I fell in love with the movie and I knew I wanted to read the book but I wanted to wait a while because I don't know I just needed to wait and um, I saw this at the bookstore and I picked it up and I just wanted to read it and I did and I loved it so much oh gosh okay so I looked on Goodreads and it said that this book, a couple genres that they attributed to this book was LGBT, fiction, romance, and contemporary. I personally would just call it a love story. It is kind of a contemporary romance, although some of it, a lot of it takes place in the 80s. A good portion of it takes place in the 80s, so it can almost be a historical kind of I think <laughs> I'm not sure I don't know but uh, it was just a beautiful novel um, I'm actually I'm usually really bad at summarizing books I'm very bad at it <laughs> but I'm gonna try I'm gonna practice so I'm gonna give it a shot and then if I do a terrible job I will just read the back of it so that way if you if no one know if you don't know what this book is about or whatever then you can get an idea so call me by your name is a romance it is told from the first person point of view of Elio. He is 17 and he lives in Italy and he, oh God, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> he, his father's a professor and every summer his father has a house guest that stays with them for the summer. And it's like an academic house guest. So sometimes I think it might be students of, his, of the professor or colleagues or something. And this particular year, it's Oliver, and he's from America. He is a professor at Columbia, and he is working on a book, and he is kind of there to work on it during the summer. So it's a love story between them two. It's a coming-of-age story. Elio falls in love with... Oliver and it's contentious at first sometimes they seem like they like each other and sometimes they seem like they hate each other and then they fall in love and they have this brief love affair and then the rest of the book kind of spans 20 30 years after that I don't know if that was a good synopsis or not but I'm gonna read the back and you can decide on your own okay so call me by your name is the story of a sudden and powerful romance that blossoms between an adolescent boy and a summer guest at his parents' cliffside mansion on the Italian Riviera. Each is unprepared for the consequences of their attraction, when during the restless summer weeks, unrelenting currents of obsession, fascination, and desire intensify their passion and test the charged ground between them. Recklessly, the two verge toward the one thing both fear they may never truly find again, total intimacy oh gosh okay so I don't think I did a terrible job but it's good to have practice so this book was beautiful I'm actually really proud I read this book not only because it's such an amazing novel but this is the very first romance I've read that was not heterosexual this is between two men and I've never read a romance like that before I I loved it. 
I just loved it. And one thing I, I mean, it wasn't something I ever really thought about much. I'm personally, I'm, I'm heterosexual and maybe that's why I've mostly read heter heterosexual romances. I thought that that mattered. Like for me personally, I thought like, well, I'm attracted to men. So I want to read a romance that has to do with a, a man, a woman and a man or something like that because of my own personal preference. I thought that that mattered, you know, like that that's what I would be interested in reading. But when I watch movies like this, I love them. And so I'm like, well, maybe it's the same. Maybe it can't be that different for books. So when I read this, it was just, I think one of the most beautiful things I found out about myself is that it doesn't matter to me. It's love is love. And that's what I like really realized from this book is that love is love. And there's so many different kinds of love. You know, there's, there's just so many different kinds and no two loves are the same. And I found that, that it, that was something that barely registered in my brain was the fact that these two were, were guys. These were two men. And I loved that, you know, like it was just a love story. And yes, that played a part. It did play a part in the story, them being homosexual in the eighties, Elio, well, from here on out, there's going to be spoilers. So if you haven't read this and you don't want to hear any spoilers, probably stop watching now. I'm just going to kind of talk about the book, random things that I want to talk about. And this is kind of for people who have already read the book and who want to talk about it or whatever. Um, so the one thing, so Elio is, is, is very lucky in this book because his parents are very liberal minded I would say they're very they're very very smart they love Elio so much and they what they care about is him experiencing life they don't have these I don't know these preconceived notions of who he should be and you know I don't know it's it's just it's very freeing and Elio Elio's very lucky because he knows like him being gay or being attracted to men is not an issue. It, it's not an issue for his dad or his mom and he knows they won't care. And I just love that. Like that's wonderful. But I get the impression, you get the impression that it's a big issue for Oliver. Oliver being an American, living on the East Coast, working at Columbia. I get the impression that it would be unacceptable to his family if he were to be gay. So there is tension in the book with that. And that's sad, but it makes sense in the eighties and stuff like that. Like it wasn't nearly as acceptable as it is in society now. And even now it's still issue an issue for some people. But so that was that part of it. And another thing I found like, yes, I, I watched the movie first. But of course, like the movie is different from the book, which is normal. I don't ever have issue with that. One thing I didn't realize though, which the movie did kind of touch upon, was that I don't know if you could necessarily call them Elio or Oliver gay because they both have relationships with women too. And even Elio, I mean, we're, the book is from Elio's point of view, so we're mostly in his head. And you never, I don't even think the word gay ever comes out once. I don't think that's even, I don't think the word gay is said once in this book. But you get the impression, I mean, he's 17, he's exploring his sexuality and he has sexual experiences with girls and he has a sex, he has sexual experiences with a guy, Oliver. And I don't know, I just get the impression that he would be bisexual, I guess, if you had to, if you had to put a, a name to it. Same thing with Oliver. Oliver ends up later on in life getting married and having children to a woman. He gets married to a woman, has children. So just from what I can gather, I guess, I would say that they're bisexual. Um, but you can also say that they don't have a sexual preference, almost like I don't know. It almost seems like it, there's no point in saying, like, putting a label to it because they just like what they like and they love what they love and they experience what they experience. I don't know if that's right to say that, but but I did I did like that. I don't know. In the movie, I kind of kept thinking in my head, like, they're gay, you know? 
like almost like assigning them a title or, or a label. But in the book, it's a lot more fluid than that. It's a little more complicated than that. So I, I found that interesting. I found that really interesting. And it largely is a coming of age story. You, you find Elio growing up and trying to come to terms with his own feelings and his own way in the world and how he responds to people and and this is his first love and it's it's just a really beautiful story and it's set in it it's set in Italy in the summertime it is gorgeous it's just the words everything about it so it was really nice spending some time in a villa in Italy for the summer in the 80s <laughs> um, I also spent a week in Rome you know there's a week that or not a week but a few days that they spend in Rome and it's just it's beautiful so I definitely recommend this book I cried at the end I it I don't know sometimes I just don't have words for this book it's just it's really beautiful and their love story is so it's so real and it's just so precious and I guess things like this don't happen all the time you know you don't always find a love like this and so it's very special and I gave this book five out of five stars I loved it so much it was beautiful like I said I cried at the end oh gosh <laughs> it was wonderful and Elio like Elio is just a beautiful beautiful character I love the way he thinks sometimes like the way he forms images in his head and the way he kind of reconciles the world around him he's very poetic and very just beautiful just the way he th just the things he says sometimes are just so beautiful and I don't know I just love him as a character I really do you just fall in love with Elio and his family and everything so it was beautiful so um, there were a few things that um, I kind of irked me here and there about the book um, or maybe not even irked me, but just kind of were a little off. So this book, in my opinion, has a lot of run on sentences. So the writing is very beautiful, yes, but there are so many run on sentences, which just surprised the crap out of me because I'm like, this is such a famous, wonderful, beautifully written novel. And everyone always says run on sentences are awful. And I'm so guilty of run on, run on sentences. That's probably one of the, the things I do the worst all the time. So I'm working on that. But so there's a lot of run on sentences in here. But apparently it's not an issue. For me, it was a little bit. There were times where sentences would go on and on and on. And I would get a little lost. And I would be like, wait, what is he talking about? You know, he would go on and on and on. And, and then I kind of realized like, okay, this is the issue with run on sentences. You know, you can get lost. And it's... It's easier to understand a sentence when it's written short, succinctly, clearly. Um, so I definitely got that. So I found that I had to reread certain sentences, cer certain sentences a few times because of the fact. But that's okay. It, it wasn't that big of an issue. Um, other than that, I mean, I really don't have anything else. I don't have anything bad to say about this book. I also just found out that. Andre Asiman is coming out with a sequel to this book. Oh my god, it's called Find Me. And all I know so far, and this is I think something I read on Goodreads, like a little snippet on Goodreads, it says that it is, I think it's from the point of view of Samuel, Elio's father. And apparently Elio's father and his mother got divorced. And so... This book is about Samuel on a train on his way to Rome where Elio lives now. He is a gifted professional classical pianist, pianist, whatever. And so he's going there to visit his son. So this is later in life and there's that. And then there's also a little bit about the fact that Oliver's sons are all grown up and out of the house. And now Oliver is considering moving back to Europe. So that's all I know. And I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The fact that there could be a second part to the story just kills me. Oh my god. So even though if you've read this, hopefully no one else is watching this that doesn't want to be spoiled. But if you've read this book, they don't end up together in the book. And it's so sad. It's just awful. They should end up together. But they don't. And they meet each other a few times throughout their lives after their their 
romance in this that summer in the 80s and that's it you know and I but but just hearing about find me makes me think like there's still a chance they could still end up together somehow at least in some way oh it's just so beautiful it's such a beautiful book I recommend reading it please read it it's wonderful you won't be disappointed it, it is beautiful writing it's not that long at all it's like 200 and some odd amount of pages 248 pages and it's wonderful so please read it <laughs> uh all right so that's that's about it um i hope you enjoyed this video if you've read this book please let me know tell me what you think about it and i will see you guys in my next video bye oh wait i fucked that up babe are you outside my door you are you creep i hate when he listens to me like the, a couple fiction oh my God. it is told from the first part recklessly the two verge toward the one thing both feared oh sorry recklessly the two um